Hello and God bless you. This is Cassandra Hill from Mount Sinai Deliverance Missionary Baptist Church bringing to you today the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, October the 17th, 2021. And um, we are in lesson number seven of the fall quarter and our lessons are coming from the Union Gospel Press Christian Life Series books. And we are so happy to have another opportunity to study God's Word together and meet together in Sunday School. I want to say hello to everyone that may be watching. I pray that all is well with you and your families. And I pray that you had a blessed week last week and you're ready for the start of another great week. And I can't think of a better way than we start our week with the Word of God. Or you may be uh, viewing this um, video later during the week. But anytime we know is the right time, amen, to study God's Word. So, so delighted that you are viewing this video today. Now, before we get into our lesson, we want to bow our head in a word of prayer. Always want to ask the Spirit of the Lord to be with us in whatever we endeavor to do for Him. So at this time, let us pray. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we come to tell you thank you. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to study your word today. And Lord, we just praise you for giving us your word to study. And Father, as we study today, we ask that you would open up our understanding and help us to receive what your word has for us today. Lord, we ask that you would bless everyone that's watching this video in whatever area they stand in need of, Lord. Lord, we lift up the bereaved. We ask that you would comfort their hearts and their minds as they go through this time, Lord. And Father, we ask that if there are any sick, Father, we ask that you let your healing virtue flow through their bodies right to the point of that need. Father, we ask that you heal right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, somebody may just need encouragement today. Father, we ask that you lift up every bowed down head. Father, we ask that you let them know that you are with them, God, and that trouble don't last always. And Father, we just pray for them right now that they are released from whatever that situation is right now. And Father God, those that may need a financial blessing. Father, we know that your word says that the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Father, we all belong to you. And we're just asking right now that you bless your children. Father, give them favor on their jobs. Or if they're looking for a new job, Father, we ask that you open up that door in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just ask that you bless all of your people, Father, your senior citizens, as well as the youth, God. We just praise you and we just bless you and we honor you now. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you for it. Amen and amen. All right, we just thank God because God is so good and we know that God just desires to bless his people. So we're going to um, get on into our lesson now. Amen. Amen. This, this month of October, we've been studying the faithfulness of God. And what these lessons are showing us is that God is faithful to his people, even when we're not always so faithful to him. Amen. Amen. And um, we have been looking at God's faithfulness to uh, Abraham's descendants, the Israelites. And uh, we learned that, that, and that God had miraculously delivered them from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. And he set them on a journey to the land that he had promised to Abraham. That's the land of Canaan. And along the way, God provided guidance and protection in the form of a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He provided food and he provided water for them. And they also had goods and livestock that they had carried with them when they exited from Egypt. So the Lord was really good to his people, yet time and time again, instead of them being grateful, they were ungrateful and they complained against God. And we saw that this was repeated over and over again. Now, last week um, in our lesson, we saw that God anointed 70 of the elders of Israel to provide help for Moses in leading the people because the task had become so great for him. So we saw God's 
uh, faithfulness in that act. And God also provided a massive amount of quail for the people after they complained that they did not have meat. Amen. And they had so much meat. Amen. Amen. They literally were sick of it. Amen. Amen. But instead of uh, being repenting of the complaining that they had done and showing any um, any gratitude for the Lord providing what they had asked for, they instead began to show their greed and rebellion by eating and hoarding the meat. Amen. Amen. And God was so displeased at their behavior that he sent a plague that caused many of them to die right there. Amen. Amen. But even though that was shocking, we still saw the faithfulness of God. Amen. And that he allowed the remaining people to continue on their journey to the promised land. Now, God could have changed his mind. Amen. Because they were so ungrateful. But he uh, was faithful to what he had promised. Amen. Now, in today's lesson, uh, we are continuing to see the faithfulness of God as the Israelites, they continue their journey to the promised land. And I want to read our introduction in the book here because it just sets the scene for what's going to take place in this lesson. Amen. And it reads, and one of the greatest enemies facing the church is jealousy. Even we, the children of God, can be guilty of allowing the success or promotion of others to blind us to what God actually wants from us. If God has not given us the job or title we want, it is because he has something else for us at this time. Anything we do that is different from what God has for us should be considered a regrettable step down. It is especially dangerous when jealousy causes us to speak against someone whom God has anointed for special service, as we will see in this week's lesson. God showed that he would not tolerate anyone coming against the leader he had anointed to nurture and care for Israel as they journeyed to the promised land. Amen. Now that just takes us right on to today's lesson, which is entitled Miriam and Aaron Oppose Moses. And the lesson text is coming from Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 through 16. Our related scriptures are number chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 16 through 21, Deuteronomy chapter 34 verses 5 through 12, Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 23, and Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. The time is about 1444 BC, and the place is the desert of Paran. The golden text reads, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream and this is coming from numbers chapter 12 and verse number six now today's aim is to learn to see god's faithfulness in the face of pettiness and betrayal of even close friends and family to affirm that each of our roles in god's plan is determined by god alone to acquire the focus and determination to not be distracted from seeing God's faithfulness by the ungodly acts of those around us. Now we begin our reading with Numbers chapter 12 and verse number 1. And it reads, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Amen and amen. All right. So we see our lesson starts out with Miriam and Aaron speaking against their brother Moses. Amen. Because he had married an Ethiopian woman. Amen. Now, 
Um, we can uh, take a look back. And, uh, many of our may be already familiar with the story of Moses. Amen. But we know that Moses was raised in the Egyptian palace. He was taken in or adopted by uh, the Pharaoh at that time, that the Pharaoh's daughter. And she raised Moses as her own son. And um, they became, after a period of time, as an adult, Moses uh, uh, found out that he actually was not Egyptian, but he was a Hebrew. Amen. And at that time, the Hebrews were enslaved. Amen. And, and Moses witnessed a Hebrew being mistreated by an Egyptian. And it caused Moses to become angry and he reacted. And in his reaction, it, it, it uh, wound up in the killing of the Egyptian. At that point, Moses fled Egypt, amen, because of what he had done, amen. And he went to a place called Midian, amen. And, and while there at Midian, he met um, uh, Jethro, amen, which was the priest of Midian, amen. Now, Jethro had seven daughters, amen. And one of those daughters was named Zephora, amen. And she and Moses were married. Amen. Now Moses was there and he had settled there and he had uh, at least two sons. Amen. Amen. With Zephora. And he was, that was, he was content to stay there. Amen. Amen. But of course we know what happened. God met Moses there. Amen. And in the burning bush, amen, he called Moses, amen, to go back to Egypt and to lead the Hebrews, amen, out of Egypt, amen, and on to the promised land, amen, and as we say, the rest is history, amen, amen, but some scholars said that Midian is another name for Ethiopia, amen, amen, and that Sephora is the woman that is referred to in verse number one, amen, but then there are other scholars that say that by this time, Sephora had passed away, she had died, and Moses had remarried a woman that was from Ethiopia. Amen. So there's some disagreement there among biblical scholars. Amen. But in any case, uh, the scripture here is letting us know that Moses was married to a woman from Ethiopia. Amen. And the ethnicity of this woman, amen, um, caused... Uh, uh, Moses, uh, calls Moses' uh, brother and sister, Miriam and uh, Aaron, amen, to resent him. Amen, amen. So they had something going on there, amen. Now in verse number 12, Miriam is mentioned first, amen. And some commentaries suggest that um, she's mentioned first because she's the instigator of this opposition. Amen, amen. And then we know then Moses had faced opposition um, during his time leading the Israelites. It happened more than once. Amen. He, he, we, we, uh, every time the, the children of Israel complained about something, um, usually it was they brought it to Moses. They were complaining and blaming Moses for something. Amen. Something they did not like. Amen. But this time was significant because... This was his brother and his sister, amen, that has this uh, uh, opposition going on right now, amen. But it's even more significant because of the positions that Miriam and Aaron held, amen, amen. It's, it's bad enough that that's his brother and sister, amen, but they hold prominent positions, amen. And our text says that Miriam is mentioned as a prophetess among the women, and that's in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 20. While Aaron was appointed by God to be the high priest of Israel. And we remember that because uh, we saw that in our first lesson. Amen. We're talking about the holiness of God. Amen. And how Aaron uh, was, was chosen. Amen. To be the first high priest. Amen. And all that that involved. Amen. Amen. So our text goes on to read. It says, Prophet. And high priests thus allied themselves against God's appointed mediator over Israel. Amen. Now that's 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 bad. Amen. Amen. These are the three leaders 
uh, in the in the uh, well, we could say that the church or or um, in God's uh, uh, the nation, Amen, of people, Amen, that He has chosen, Amen, Amen, and you have two of them pitting themselves against the leader, Amen, Amen, and that's 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 bad. Miriam's prominence and the judgment she subsequently suffered indicate that she was the instigator who influenced her brother Aaron to join her in bringing their grievance. Amen. It's so important, amen, that when people bring things to you that you know is not right, that you don't get on board with it because they are your relative or they are your friend. Amen, amen. We have to stand up for right even if it means standing against a relative or a friend, amen, which is what Aaron should have done in this case when Marion instigated this situation, amen. But we saw that that, that didn't happen, amen, amen. Now it goes on to say that with the problems caused by the complaining of the mixed multitude, which led to the quail and the plague and the blaspheming, of God's name by the son of an Egyptian man. Now, these are things that we studied in our last lessons, amen, previous lessons, amen. Because of these things, perhaps Marion and Aaron were suggesting that Moses was hypocritical for having a wife of non-Israelite descent, amen, amen. Now, if this was the woman that he married 40 years ago, that really doesn't make since now does it amen but even if she's a more recent wife god didn't have any laws against uh the mixed um um marriages or, or anything like that amen uh, 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 as long as they were not um there were certain people that they were not to marry but um uh, apparently this wasn't an issue amen because after all god had called moses and he knew who moses was when he called him Amen, amen. But uh, whatever particular objection they voiced concerning Moses' wife, it was, as we will see, nothing but a smokescreen for their real reason for resenting their brother. Amen. So this is what they have claimed is their issue with Moses. Amen. But that's not really the real issue, as we will see in a minute. Amen. Let's continue our reading. Verse number two says, and they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Amen and amen. All right, all right. Now we're going on with verse number two and three, and we begin to see that this initial resentment that uh, Miriam and Aaron had for Moses because of his wife ethnicity was really about something else, as we had already spoken in the in our previous reading. Amen. It seems that they were using this marriage as a means to justify what they were really upset with Moses about. Now, the real issue they had with Moses is that they were jealous. They were jealous of Moses' authority and his close relationship with God. Amen. Now, isn't that kind of silly? Amen. 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 Because God can choose whoever he wants to choose. Amen. Amen. In every, whatever position or role he wants them to be in. But this is what their issue was. Amen. They questioned what made Moses so special and qualified him for, at the, for the leadership role that he was in, seeing that God also spoke to them. Amen, amen. Now, they, they may have felt that, uh, they may have been implying that it was Moses' ego, amen, that caused him to feel qualified for this, for this position. Amen, amen. I, and I'm sure um, many of you can relate to this. Amen. You've been in positions of leadership maybe in the church or maybe on your jobs, and you will have subordinates, amen, that really don't want to acknowledge you as the leader, amen, amen, and especially on our jobs, amen, that happens a lot, amen, we have people, but um, of course, we're dealing with people in that case, 
uh, oftentimes they're not Christian, they're not saved, they haven't been born again. Amen. But we also encounter it in church as well. Amen. If you are a leader of a board or, or even if you're the pastor, amen, amen, you often find that people don't want to submit to leadership. And they began to think that if they, if you, what makes you so special that you can do this? Amen. God can speak to me too. Amen. 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 But we have to be careful with that as we're going to see as the lesson goes on. Amen. Amen. Because one thing we should notice in verse number two, after uh, Miriam uh, and and uh, Aaron say what they that they have, you know this. Um, you know, that they, God speaks to them too. The last sentence says, and the Lord heard it. Amen. Amen. That, you know, that just kind of reminds me. Amen. When you're watching a movie, amen. And, and, uh, something happens in the movie and then you hear that, that music, amen. That tells you, amen, that something is about to happen. You know, they have that music, dun, 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 amen. <laughs> something is about to happen here, amen. And when I read that and the Lord heard it, amen, I kind of heard that music, dun, 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 amen, <laughs> that something is about to take place. And our text said that the Bible's interjection that the Lord heard it establishes a dark turn in the narrative. Amen. God hears everything we say or think. Amen. And we should be careful to honor him and his leaders in every way. Amen. God hears what even we think. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Before we even let it out of our mouth. Amen. So we need to be careful about that. Amen. And ask God to search us and, and don't let things linger in our mind. Amen. That we know is not right. Amen. Amen. But then verse 3 comes right along and it refutes this idea that Miriam and Aaron may have had that uh, it was Moses' ego that caused him to feel that he should be qualified as the leader because verse number 3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. So this verse is pointed out uh, Moses' meek character. Amen. He was the meekest man upon the face of the earth. And this meekness represents humility or is associated with humility. Amen. And this is the exact thing that his siblings were implying. Amen. Amen. So the scripture is quick to point it out that Moses was not in that position of leadership. Amen. Because of his ego. Amen. As a matter of fact, we know that Moses tried to get out of it. Amen. Amen. And even last week when Moses kind of, he got into his complaining. Amen. He was asking, he was complaining about the fact that God had placed this assignment upon him. So, and you know what? A lot of times when you are leadership is a leader, especially in the church, amen, you'll be surprised. The, the, they don't, the leaders of themselves, uh, uh, sometimes, amen, I can't speak for all these, but sometimes you'll be surprised. They really don't see themselves as being qualified in and of themselves to do that. And they question sometimes themselves why God has put them in that position. Amen. Amen. But God knows what he's doing. Amen. We have to trust God. Amen. 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 But we see that in Moses. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't ask for this position. It was God brought it to him. Amen. Amen. Let's read on verse number four says, and the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Mario, come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Amen and amen. All right. Not only did the Lord hear, amen, he heard them, amen. Now he's responding to them, amen, amen. This is something else. Amen. He called all three, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Amen. Amen. He called them to come out to the tabernacle. Amen. Amen. And there he manifested himself in a pillar of cloud, the pillar of cloud that had been resting above the tabernacle. 
he came down to the door of the tabernacle, amen, to meet them where he had called them, amen. And then they called the three of them, but then he called Aaron, Aaron and Miriam to come forth, them two to step forward, amen, to come forth, amen. And that, that's kind of a oh, position I wouldn't want to be in, amen, amen. Now, the text says previously, we learned about a man who was punished for cursing the name of God. And now we see the seriousness of speaking against God's chosen servant. While not as serious as speaking directly against God himself, it is still a dangerous thing to speak against those whom God has divinely chosen for a specific work. It is like saying that God did not know what he was doing when he chose that person. Amen. Amen. So that, that's a serious thing. Amen. And you see people even today, people today are so bold. Amen. Amen. They'll speak against the pastor. They'll, and now with the, with the social media, oh, people will get on social media and they'll say things about a pastor or a uh, 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 a, a, a person that God has called, maybe a, 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 a prophet or a teacher or one of the fivefold ministries that a person may be operating in. Amen. You'll see people will actually get up and they will actually speak against amen a person because they will say things like well he's just a man like me amen amen but but our lesson is showing us that uh you know God is concerned about how we treat the people that he has called. Amen. While it's true that a pastor or, or, or a leader is not God. Amen. They're not God. Amen. But God wants us to respect them because he has called them for that position. Amen. So we have to be careful with that. Amen. And we got a lot of that going on in our world today where people do not respect authority and they don't respect authority uh in any facet amen but it's even it's it's so terrible even in the house of god you see people not expect and not respecting authority amen so we, we got to be really careful about because god does not uh he's not pleased with that amen now the text goes on to say that God uses individual and church committees to help God's servants find the place and ministry where they can best serve the Lord with their unique gifts. However, ultimately, it is the Lord who chooses people for service according to his will. Admittedly, we may not always understand his reasoning, but we must always be content to submit to his will. We must be content to serve in the capacity for which he has called and equipped us and to work humbly alongside our fellow servants. Amen. Amen. God has gifts and talents in the church that he wants to be used in his house. Amen. And we must learn to work together with our brothers and sisters. Amen. In the area in which God has called them to minister amen amen okay let's continue our reading with verse number six amen and it reads and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet among you i the lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream my servant moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house Amen and amen. All right, now verse number six. That's um, part of our golden text there that we re that uh, is in that verse. Amen, amen. But um, what what he's saying is is that um, the Lord um, normally he God would speak to Moses and Moses would speak to the people. But we see in this case he's speaking directly to Miriam and to Aaron. Amen. 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 Because uh they they because and this is we can see the point of that, amen. Because they was complaining against Moses' authority. Amen. Now they would have no um doubt or no question as to who is speaking to them now. Amen. There would be no mistake in this. This was God speaking. 
Amen. They couldn't say, well, Moses is just saying this because it's him. Amen. No, this is God speaking to them directly. Amen. Amen. And he confirmed with them that, yes, he does speak with the prophets among them. Amen. But it was through visions and dreams. Amen. That God had spoken with them. Amen. Now, when I was reading this verse, it reminded me of last week's lesson. Amen. How the children of Israel exaggerated about all of this wonderful food. Amen. That they had back when they were slaves in Egypt. Amen. And we know that as being a slave, they didn't have the choices of food. Amen. Amen. That wouldn't even be reasonable. Amen. They were exaggerating. And we talked a lot in our lesson last week about how exaggeration makes us look so favorably on things in the past and helps us look uh, so uh, unfavorably on things in our present situation. Amen. Amen. And same way, I, I think that Miriam and Aaron were exaggerating because let them tell it. Amen. Uh, in the earlier verses, amen. In verse number two, amen. God spoke, speaks by them just as much as he does with Moses. Amen. And we see that that's not true. God is letting them know. I speak to you all through visions and dreams. Amen. Not face to face like he does with Moses. Amen. So they, God has given them a reality check. Amen. In verse number six. Amen. You don't have you don't have it like that with me. Amen. Amen. And some people we feel that way today. Amen. We would we, we you know we feel like God well, I don't need a pastor because God speak to me. Amen. God will not speak to you the way he speaks to his pastors. Amen. Amen. That's not we have to be, be get real. Amen. Amen. We have to get real. Amen. If God spoke all that much uh to the, us lay people like that then he wouldn't need the the pastors amen he called those fivefold ministers right the what the apostles the prophets the evangelists amen the pastors and the teachers amen he called them why he said for the perfecting of the church amen and for the edifying of the body amen it, it that's so the church needs perfecting and the church needs edifying and these are the offices that the word of god says that the lord uses for that purpose amen so yes we need amen the leadership amen amen because god does not speak to us amen individuals like he speaks to those that's not to say god does not speak because he's made it clear in verse six he spoke to them in visions and in dreams. So God speaks to us through his word and sometimes, yes, through visions and through a dream. Amen. God will speak to us. Amen. But a lot of times he speaks to us through the teaching that we receive from the pastors. Amen. Amen. But anyway, this is kind of a reality check for Miriam and Aaron uh, in verse number six. Amen. Because they were... The, it's it's funny because they they were implying that it was Moses's ego that was out of check, but we see really it was their ego, Amen, that was out of check, Amen. And oftentimes that's the way the enemy is, Amen. The enemy will come in, he's a deceiver. He will deceive you and have you thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think, Amen, Amen. But that's just that's the enemy's job, Amen. And that's why we have the Word of God. Amen. That will keep us in line. Amen. Amen. And the Lord is speaking to Miriam and Aaron directly here, giving them a reality check of their standing with him. Amen. 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 And if we read on verse number seven, he said, my servant Moses is not so. Amen. He referred to Moses as his servant. Now that's um that's giving us an indication that there is a special relationship between God and Moses. Amen. And we know that Moses wasn't perfect. Amen. We talked about last week how Moses began to complain and even blamed God. Amen. For putting this assignment on him. Amen. Amen. But one thing is that Moses was faithful. Amen. In that he consistently obey the Lord. Amen. And sometimes, you know, it can be that way. You can see a person and you don't understand. Why is God using that person? Why did we, you know what? God can see what we can't see. Amen. To the outside, 
Maybe it looked like Moses was not the perfect man for the job. Amen. But apparently God saw him as being the perfect man for that job. Amen. And the same with us, whatever role we've been called in, we should not um, envy anybody else, whatever God has called them to do. Because that God has given them the, the, the grace and the, the, the uh, ability to do what they do. And God has given you the grace and the ability to do what you do. Amen. So we don't have to be jealous of one another, but we can all use what God has given us. For his glory. Amen. Amen. Okay. We're going to continue now. Reading with verse number 8. And it reads. With him will I speak. Mouth to mouth. Even apparently. And not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord. Shall he behold. Wherefore. Then were ye not afraid. To speak. Against my servant Moses. Amen. And number nine, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Amen and amen. Okay, we see here in verse number eight, God is going into more detail about this relationship that he and Moses has. Amen, amen. And I want to read it a little bit here from our textbook. It says, God spoke to Moses. Excuse me. When God spoke to Moses, he did not do so through visions and dreams. Instead, he spoke to him directly. He did not call, use riddles or figurative speech, but conversed clearly with him. Now, you see the difference between his communication with Moses and with them. With them, he spoke with visions and dreams and things maybe that was not always clear. Amen. Amen. But with Moses, he spoke with him directly. Amen. Amen. God and Moses spoke to one another in a way that showed very close communion and fellowship. Amen. God then asked Miriam and Aaron, Aaron very pointedly, why, knowing he spoke directly to Moses, they were not afraid to speak against him. Amen. What made them think that they could speak against one so close to God without any repercussions. Amen. The anger of the Lord burned against Miriam and Aaron. Amen. And they had seen, um, they had seen the result of God speaking directly to Moses. And they had seen how God used Moses, amen, to, to, uh, to perform miracles Amen. Some of the miracles that helped to free them from the uh, the bondage of Pharaoh. Amen. Back in Egypt. Amen. And especially Aaron. Aaron was right there with Moses when a lot of those miracles were wrought. Amen. And, and he used um, Aaron's rod. Amen. So Aaron knew that God was working through Moses. Yet he allowed himself to be influenced by Miriam. Amen. 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 So, Amen. Oh, uh, Amen. But 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 the Lord was questioning, why would you even allow? Uh, why would you even speak about a person that you know God is using? And that's a question we can ask ourselves, isn't it? Amen. Amen. The Lord was angry. Amen. At them. Amen. He said the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. Amen. 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 He was angry at the way that Miriam and Aaron had behaved towards Moses. Now this should, is a point right here that can challenge us. How are we respecting God's leaders? Amen. Are we giving them the proper respect? Amen. We see how God feels about that when we do not. Amen. And some of us have seen God, um, uh, God work things out, amen, through the prayers, amen, amen. So we should be uh, ashamed of ourselves, amen, amen, to allow our, the enemy to use us in this way, amen. Okay, let's read on verse number 10, amen. It says, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. 
Amen and amen. All right. All right. Now, that's a that's a that's a shocking situation. Amen. That had taken place, hasn't it? Amen. But the text put put a, a, a interesting spin on this. Amen. It described the scene at the tabernacle as a courtroom. Amen. 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 Miriam and Aaron were the plaintiffs. Amen. Moses was the defendant. Amen. And God was both Moses' attorney. Amen. And he was the judge. Amen. Amen. Now Moses didn't have to say a word. Amen. God called Miriam and Aaron to come forth and he said what he spoke to them, right? Amen. Moses didn't have to say one word. He just stood there. Amen. And Moses' case was dismissed. Amen. However, judgment came swiftly against the plaintiffs. Amen. As Miriam uh, instantly became leprous. Amen. Amen. And we know that that that's a terrible skin disease that fell on her. Amen. Suddenly. Amen. After God departed. Amen. He departed and, and, and judgment hit her just like that. Amen. That's why we don't want to play with God. Amen. 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 And we don't want to uh, disrespect God or his people. Amen. Read now verse number 11 says, And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. Amen and amen. All right, see, Aaron, seeing that terrible skin condition, amen, that has come upon his sister, amen, amen. He turned to Moses, amen, asking him not to punish Miriam, amen, for the sin that they had committed. Amen. So he, he admitted. He confessed that they had uh, sinned. Amen. Amen. In their behavior against their brother. Amen. But Moses did not inflict the punishment on Miriam. Amen. It wasn't Moses that did this. Right. Amen. But Aaron now using that term uh, in. Uh, amen. In, in the in, in, uh, in the verse he said he called. Uh, uh, in verse 11, he said, Alas, my Lord, using the word Lord, amen, amen. He's acknowledging, amen, that Moses is God's chosen servant, amen. You see how the enemy had puffed them up, he and Miriam, amen. Now, how come they could, if the Lord spoke so much to them, how come they couldn't go back to the Lord now, amen, and ask for repentance and forgiveness and the reversal of this condition. Amen. They realized at that point they didn't have what they thought they had. Amen. With God. Amen. And they needed Moses. Amen. 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 So we have to be careful. The very one. Amen. That we are criticizing and talking about and putting down. We may have to come to that person to ask for assistance. Amen. Amen. I've seen situations where the individual was really being disrespectful to leadership, but they found themselves in a situation where they needed prayer. Amen. And they had to come back to that very one that they had disrespected. Amen. And ask for prayer. Amen. For a life threatening condition to be taken off of them. Amen. I've seen that happen. Amen. So we want to be careful of how we treat God's people. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. So Aaron here looking at his sister, he compared her to like a stillborn child who comes out of the womb with the flesh half eaten away. So Miriam was in a bad shape. Amen. She was in a bad condition, just like that. Amen, amen, amen. It reminds me of that saying we say sometimes, you know where you've been, but you don't know where you're going in life. Amen. Amen. You have to be careful. Amen. Because we don't know where we're going in life. Amen. Amen. So we want to be careful how we treat God's people. Amen. Amen. Now, Aaron didn't want his sister to die. Amen. So he pleaded with Moses. Amen. To intercede for her life. 
Amen. He realized at this point they needed someone who God would hear. Amen. And who God would answer. And that was not him and Miriam. That was Moses. That was the one that they were talking against. Amen. Amen. So he needed God, Moses to go to God on Miriam's behalf. Hey, all right. Now we're going to read on verse number 13. And it says that Moses cried unto the Lord saying, heal her now. O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. Amen and amen. All right. So we see in verse number 13, Moses cried out in desperation. Amen. And he pleaded and he repented. Uh, that, that for God to, to heal her. Amen. So he cried out in repentance and in desperation for God to heal Miriam. Amen. 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 And our text says that Moses' prayer, amen, for Miriam shows that he did not allow feelings of anger or bitterness towards her to dominate his thoughts or attitude. In fact, there was no indication from the text and all that Moses even harbored any resentment toward Miriam or Aaron. God was the one who had called Miriam and Aaron to account and defended Moses. Moses, on the other hand, never offered one word of self-defense or rebuttal. Amen. So again, you know, last week we saw the maturity, the spiritual maturity of Moses when, um, um, when they came to Moses um, because the two men, the two elders that were outside of the camp, the spirit fell on them and they were praising God. Amen. And, and Joshua, he wanted Moses to, to make them stop because they were not at the tabernacle. And Moses, uh, uh, he said, well, are you doing this out of some kind of uh, envy for me? Or are you trying to protect me? Or you think that they're trying to... Uh, 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 challenge my authority. He was more mature than that because he could see a move of God taking place. And here again, we can see the maturity of Moses because he didn't get mad at Miriam or Aaron. He didn't. He didn't. He immediately pleaded on their behalf. Amen. Amen. And that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be mature children of God. Amen. And when we find a brother or sister that is in need, amen, pray for them. Amen. Even if the Bible tells us, right, he told us to pray for those that despitefully use us. Amen. Amen. And I know that's difficult. That's hard. And we can't do that without the help of the Lord. Amen. But this is what God wants us to do. Amen. We are, we, Moses is showing an excellent example of spiritual maturity in a leader. Amen. That, that one that we should want to emulate. Amen. Amen. He didn't get offended. Amen. He didn't let his flesh get in the way. Amen. Amen. He didn't let his you know, some people talk about the emotions. I'm in my feet, their feelings. That's the word I want to use. I'm in my feelings. Amen. He didn't allow his feelings to get in the way. And again, this is something that is difficult for us to do on our own. Amen. We need the help of the Lord to do that. Amen. But we can see he didn't even, he didn't reply back. He didn't try to defend himself. Sometimes we accuse of things. Amen. And we, it's, not, it's not even worth trying to defend yourself. Amen. Just give that to God and let God handle that. Amen. I, I come back to this point of your job situations. Amen. A lot of times on your job, you face so many things. Amen. There's so much competition. Amen. And people say things and they try to play little games. Amen. And it might look like that they're winning and they're having the advantage. But just give it to God. Amen. God knows how to fix things. He knows how to work things out and trust him that he's going to work it out for you. Amen. And don't try to render evil for evil. Amen. Amen. It doesn't pay off for the believer. It doesn't pay off for us. Amen. When we try to render evil for evil, it don't work out in the end. Amen. We might, we just give it to God and let him fix it. Amen. Let him handle it. And this is what Moses did. And we see that God defended Moses. Amen. 
Amen. But like again, we also see that Moses' maturity and that he immediately um, prayed for his sister. Amen. Amen. So, amen. But the Lord had a response to Moses' request. He said that if Miriam had been made ceremonially unclean by having her father, if her father had spit upon her, you know, show some kind of contempt for her by spitting on her, amen, that would have made her ceremonially unclean and she would have to stay outside the camp, amen, for seven days, amen. So God is saying, let her suffer that same thing as if, um, um, her father had put contempt upon her. Amen. Amen. After all, God was displeased with her. Amen. And God was saying that she needed to, um, she needed to experience some form of punishment for her behavior. Amen. But you know what? God is still gracious to Miriam. Amen. Because he could have banned her permanently. Amen. From the camp. He didn't do that. Amen. Instead, instead of that, he just allowed her to be ex exiled for a short period of time. Amen. Amen. And it just lets us know that, you know, when you, you, um, sin, amen, amen. And even when you ask for forgiveness, sometimes the, um, the after effects of your sin, amen, it remains there. There's some uh, punishment, amen, that has to take place, amen, amen, even though God is merciful and gracious and he forgives us. Amen. Sometimes we have to suffer the consequences. Amen. Of our wrongdoing. And that's what's taking place here. Miriam, God is going to restore her. Amen. Amen. But she does have to suffer the consequences of what she has done. And that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to do things. Amen. That have us suffering consequences. Amen. Amen. That's why we want to just do the right thing from the beginning. Amen. 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 And Aaron, he could have been totally out of this because when she came with that, he could have just put, he could have squashed that. Amen. Amen. And sometimes that's what we have to do as believers. When people come to us, don't get involved with things that we know is not right. Amen. 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 Because we don't want to have to suffer any kind of um, consequences, amen, for our wrongdoings, amen, amen. Okay, reading on verse number 15, and it says, and Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again, and afterward the people removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran, amen, and amen. All right, so our text says that the passage concludes by acknowledging that Miriam did indeed remain outside the camp for the next seven days. At the end of this time of waiting, she was received back among her people, fully restored, yet with an indelible reminder of the power of God and the evil of jealousy. During those seven days while Miriam remained outside, the people did not move on. They remained until she could rejoin them. Amen. That, that's something to think about. Amen. How Miriam's, um, Miriam's sin ultimately um, kind of stopped the progress of the people for a time. Amen. It's just something to think about. Amen. How, how that, you know, how sin keeps us, could keep us, could block us from moving forward. And uh, I've mentioned before how sin, it never just affects you. Amen. It affects others. Amen. And we can see that it did affect others because they were not able to move on until her time of uh, punishment had passed. Once Miriam returned, the people resumed their journey from Hazaroth through the wilderness of Paran. Amen. We don't, we wouldn't want anything that we are doing, any sin that we are doing, confusion that we're causing in our churches to keep us from moving forward. Amen. Isn't that something, that's something kind of to think about that how we could be playing a role with progress not being made because of some of our behavior. Just a little nugget to think about there. Amen. But you know, also I want to say 
before I read this last part about Miriam's punishment. Amen. You know, every time we see punishment exacted like that, it's a deterrent to somebody. Amen. It not only is a deterrent for Miriam, amen, she could see the danger of doing what she did, how that put her in a bad uh, position with the Lord. Amen. But it also showed others, amen, not to get not to get involved with something like that. This is something that God is not pleased with. Just like a couple of lessons ago, we, our, our lesson today mentioned it, when the man cursed the name of the Lord. Amen. And the result of that was that he was taken outside of the camp and he was stoned. And the people, the community had to stone him. They were the ones involved with the stoning. So that affected all of them. But it was also a deterrent to them. Amen. That we're not going to do that. Amen. We're not going to take the Lord's name in vain. Amen. So I'm sure this had the same effect that people began to see. Amen. How this could, uh, the punishment that could be wrought. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, before uh, engaging in this behavior. Amen. 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 Now, reading the last, this last part, it says, God graciously saw his faithful servant, Moses, through the opposition of his sister and brother. But he was also merciful towards Miriam and Aaron. His rebuke and restrained judgment were acts of loving concern for them. Amen. So we're talking about the faithfulness of God and we can see God's faithfulness in that even though Mary, Aaron and Miriam, Miriam and Aaron, they, um, they did not um, act um, accordingly. God was still faithful and gracious to them. And he was also faithful to the children of Israel because again, he allowed them to continue the journey. Amen and amen. I hope that we have gotten something out of our lesson today. So many good points. Amen. In this lesson. Amen. But first, most importantly, I think we learned um, that we are not to mistreat God's appointed leaders and the jealousy has no place in the house of God. Amen. We, we don't need to be jealous of how God is working with one individual or another because it's for our benefit. Amen. It's for the benefit of the body. Amen. Amen. So it's, it's kind of dumb to get angry or jealous of somebody God is using in your midst. Amen. Because it's ultimately going to benefit you. Amen. 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 In, in some way or another. Amen. So let us not let us not be uh, fooled by the tricks of the devil. Amen. That's just another one of his tricks. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now we're going to go into our practical point. The practical point number one says when we feel the need to rebuke someone, we should consider whether our feelings are sinful or justified according to to God's word. And that's coming from Numbers chapter 12 and verse 1. Number 2 says we should always be meek in considering our roles in the family of God. Not asserting authority where we have none. And that's coming from verses 2 and 3. Number 3 says God's justice is sure. So we can have peace when we are falsely accused or defamed coming from verses four and five number four says in christ we have intimacy with god and should seek a close relationship with him and this is coming from verses six through eight number five says do not promote provoke the lord he will chastise his children this is coming from verses 9 and 10. And number 6 says, Even after we repent, sin still often has consequences. And that's coming from verses 11 through 16. Now we have some questions here for research and discussion. We should take a look at those questions. They can help us to get a 
deeper insight into the lesson, which is what we want. It's the reason why we study God's word, because we want to know what his word has for us. And these questions are a good way to help us research and do a little bit more digging into that. And then now we have our lesson for next week, and it is entitled The Mission of 12 Spies. And the lesson text is coming from Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 through 3, verses 17 through 20, and verses 25 through 33. Our related scriptures are Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 1 through 28, Psalm division 106, verses 1 through 25, and 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 11 through 13. I pray that we have all got something out of our wonderful lesson today and that we are looking forward to continuing our study on the faithfulness of God next week with next week's lesson. Amen. Now I want to say to anyone who may be watching this video if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, today would be a wonderful day for you to do so. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the good news is that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. So God has provided a plan of salvation for us. And that's through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. And the Bible makes it clear that if we believe in our heart, that Lord Jesus, that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross, that he rose again for our sin. Amen. If we believe that in our heart, we confess that with our mouth. The Bible says, that we shall be saved. Now along with accepting Jesus Christ as Lord. That's repenting of our way of living. The way that we live. We were Lord of our lives. Amen. Amen. But we repent and we accept Jesus Christ now. As being the Lord of our life. I'm telling you. Then the Bible says you're saved. Amen. Amen. We talk about everybody wanting to go to heaven amen but there's really only one way and that's the way that god has prepared for us through his son jesus christ now at the end of this video you will see a scripture amen that you will read that talks more about amen the process of becoming born again amen and then you also see a example of a prayer that you can pray maybe you won't pray that exact wording amen but the but the basics is there. Amen. Repenting of your sin, believing in your heart, and confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. I pray that you will do that today. Amen. Because the signs of the times are all around us. Jesus is on his way back. And even if you have um, confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you strayed away, amen. Maybe you. it's time for you to, it's no maybe to it, I will say, it is time for you to come back to Christ too. Amen. Amen. Pray that prayer and repent. Ask God to restore you. Amen. God is faithful. He'll do that. We've seen the faithfulness of God. He does not desire that any be lost, but that all will come to repentance. Amen and amen. Amen. So I pray that you will do that. And then I always want to encourage you to find a good church. Amen. Every believer needs to be part of a good church. Amen. That's where you can get your instruction from a pastor. Amen. And also you can share the gifts and the talents that God has given you. Amen. To help someone else. Amen. 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 And that's what belonging to a good body of believers will allow you to do. Amen and amen. Amen. I hope that everybody again has enjoyed the lesson for today. Amen. You saw our lesson for next week. Amen. Coming to us from Numbers chapter 13. Amen. I pray that you will read ahead, study along. Amen. And meet me next time for Sunday school. Amen. Have a blessed week and God bless you. Amen.